What's up, everybody? <laughs> I'm Stan, and welcome to... Well, never mind. Let's just start that over again. <laughs> I feel short, like I'm shortchanging Mac when I just What's jump going on, guys? This is Detail Comics. <laughs> this is not Detail Comics. No, it's not. This is MES Tech. Take three. <laughs> I'm Stan. I'm Mac. Welcome to... The a, hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> easily a hot mess of tech channels on the internet. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is computer news. AMD <laughs> is what we're talking about today, and they're oh, new... Yeah. EPYC epic processor nanometer technology. Yes, seven. yeah, seven nanometer <laughs> technology. So AMD had an announcement last week where they went over their brand new seven nanometer node, which is being produced by TSMC. So what does that mean? It means we can put double the cores on the same size die. That is very true. Uh, so what it uh, what we also get is we get a, a doubling of the amount of floating point operations that it can do, mm -hmm. a drastic increase in instructions per clock, the ability to do higher clock speeds, and reduce the overall power consumption for the same amount of cores and processes. I guess we'll get to that a little later on. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going over specifications of these new things that we've seen so far. We saw the code name Rome yep. processor, um, or the server chip. Well, what is Epic? Epic is AMD's server platform. So right. they had been out of the game for servers since like early Opteron days for quite some time, simply because they didn't have something that could compete against Intel's platform in that respect. And this is not the consumer computer industry. This is like billions of dollars. I think that they call it a $29 billion opportunity to get into server markets because Intel, on the other hand, has thousand five thousand ten thousand dollar processors that go into these servers and data centers that we use on an everyday basis like google amazon everybody's got five thousand ten thousand different servers that are operating off of one of these chips right so this is a huge market share for amd to break into and it seems like they're doing a pretty good job with their epic platform which is it's good for them it's yeah. really good for them Go though. <laughs> the nice thing about the Epic processor, particularly the seven nanometer, is that it is not changing sockets. Because as we saw, there was an announcement from Intel as well dealing with a 48 core processor for their server side, but that's really two CPU dies basically pasted onto the same thing that is going to require a completely different socket when you yes. get the same performance out of two 24 core processors on a dual socket board. Which a lot of companies are still using anyway. So yeah. it, it would be a huge upgrade. However, you'd be building a whole new platform for your servers. Whereas AMD is kind of promising for the next couple of years, something where if you do invest in their product, you kind of, you see return in investment, improve efficient efficiency. Yes, it, it, improved it, efficiency. Thank you. That will in turn be more affordable. So... Absolutely, because what we saw out of this is that because it's building on a previous socket, anybody that has developed rollouts or things or they're planning on going with AMD processors anyway, they could simply just slot these brand new 7 nanometer chips into the previous hardware that they'd already spec'd out and get more performance for a very small increase in actual dollar amount. And there was actually an announcement the same exact day that Amazon was actually going to be unleashing a whole bunch of these different chips into their server farm for AWS or Amazon Web Solutions. And it was going to be an actual 10% reduction in price with the same, if not better, performance than previous servers otherwise available. Mm. And the performance side of things is where it kind of started making me worried as an Intel guy. Um, they... Who did this? Who did the test? AMD, specifically? Yeah. It was part of the AMD marketing stuff that came out on Monday. Which, you know, AMD marketing, Intel marketing, they're both bias, whatever. Um, Everybody but, wants to look the best. Of course. But when they put their processor up against two Xeons that were going at the same time, the platforms that are everywhere at the moment, it outperformed them. Single chip versus dual, mother, dual chip motherboards. So... At five ten thousand dollars per cost. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's actually crazy because one of the chips that they demonstrated. Uh, let's break it down into the actual structure because if anybody's been following along with the Ryzen structure, their CCXs are different. You know, computing clusters are based out of four cores, and with the seven nanometer process, they actually increase that to 
eight cores. So now you have the opportunity to put up to 64 cores, 128 threads on a single CPU that is operating inside the server or the high-end desktop space. They also revised the Infinity Fabric. They gave them better control and better data movement through the memory channels and the way that it interacts with the actual chips themselves. And these new Epic processors support octa-channel or eight-channel memory. And they have huge capacities for ECC memory, which is just uh, absolutely phenomenal. All while maintaining PCI Express lanes and in building in PCI Express 4. So... Yeah, there's a lot of really good things about this new platform that's going to be rolling out late 2018, early 2019 on the server side. But we don't have a server here. So <laughs> really, I'm sure that you guys don't have a server either, so why the fuck do you care? Bingo. Uh, so we care because of what is actually going to happen after server chips are released, implemented. Then they start taking that, so that product hardware and breaking it down for consumers. Something like the Ryzen platform. And, or the Threadripper platform. Or the Threadripper platform, where you're going to see, well, Threadripper's already doing it. So. Yeah. so they've got already a Threadripper that's 32 cores and 64 threads, but the potential for it to go 64 cores, 128 threads with 8-channel memory is a very realistic possibility. However, they might have to upgrade the chipsets on the boards, just depending on how the power consumption is and the way that they need to support memory on the actual board itself. The big thing that everybody out there, uh, you guys, are really going to be wanting to take advantage of and take notice of is how the new 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture is going to be implemented into consumer desktops. And when consumer desktops are something that we're talking about, we're not talking about HEDT, where you've got a Threadripper, or you've got <laughs> like a 7980XE or something like that. We're talking about X370, X470 chipsets, AM4 sockets, that kind of stuff. The direct competitor to something like a 9900K, a 9700K, 8700K, those things from Intel. Right. <laughs> if we're talking about that, what kind of advantages does an 8-core CCX give you in the same space? So since they have the opportunity to double the core structure inside the CCX and you go to a Ryzen architecture currently, you have two CCX platforms. So that means that you have a minimum available amount of cores in that platform of 16 with a potential for 32 threads. So that is hyper, you know, that is Threadripper type level performance in a chipset that is going to work on your X370 and X470 motherboards. And it's going to be able to support better RAM and that kind of stuff, and it's going to be at a lower power consumption. How's that going to, you know, affect the value that AMD really brings? What's your instinct, Mac? What does that, set, what does that tell you? What does your gut say? My gut says that AMD is now going to play on par price point with Intel, but at the same time, Intel doesn't really have anything to compete other than... The 9900K, which... Which is still on a 14 nanometer plus 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 process. Yeah. So they have no real signs of bringing out a consumer level 10 nanometer chip anytime soon. So if we have a 7 nanometer coming from AMD giving the opportunity to not necessarily get you that 5 gigahertz mark, but do a consistent 4 to 4.5 gigahertz over 16 cores and 32 threads, or even just 16 cores on their own without multi-threading, that's a huge game changer when it comes yeah. to prosumer style desktop setups. It might not get you any more advantages over a 2700X when it comes to gaming because clock speed is really king until DirectX 12 is more highly utilized. However, getting into something like Premiere or getting into Photoshop, getting into 3D modeling, things where enthusiasts really build a higher end PC, you should see really serious advantage, especially in multi-threaded workloads. It's going to be a Cinebench fucking king <laughs> when it comes down to that kind of stuff. And if it includes 32 threads, it's just even more. Because if we think about this, the way that they structured the first generation of Ryzen, they essentially disabled cores on each CCX as we went down in scope. So the 1700 and the 1700X, they had all eight cores. And then for the 2600 or the 1600, they went they shut one of them off on each CCX. So now you had six cores and so on and so forth. With eight cores available, you start at 16, you go down to 12. Wait a minute, no, you could you go down different levels. So this brings a lot of different opportunities into how you could integrate these things into there. They could actually utilize the previous 12 nanometer process, take what is essentially a 1700 or 2700, and then market that as a brand new 3000 series and just give you higher performance, more powerful and more energy efficient processes in the higher end chips. 
So that way they don't necessarily just put the old infrastructure or the old architecture out to pasture for the seven nanometer process. They can reutilize it inside the consumer space and bring more value to people at a lower end chip. Which is all amazing. Go AMD. Um, again, Intel's really got nothing. It, well, I'm sure that they've got something that they're working In on. In the works, sure. But as far as what they've released so far, it's the 9900K is amazing. It really is. But it's, from what we can tell, not going to be something that their lineup can compete with either price point-wise or multi-core processing-wise. So, And that's the way a lot of the world's going, especially, like you said, if DirectX 12 starts to become more utilized, uh, more optimized with games, computers, graphics cards that are coming out, which it will be, let's be honest, and that's just the way it's going to go. So yeah, uh, they definitely don't have anything that's going to be able to compete with that if it releases in quarter two, because we're expecting to see Ryzen and Threadripper on the 7 nanometer process around January regarding CES 2019, and that's when we're most likely going to get the release date. Also during this press release, they talked about Zen 3, which is 7 nanometer plus process, which means it's a talk cycle, so it's going to get more efficient even though it's on the 7 nanometer, and they said that seven, you know, Zen 4 is actually on task as well. They're, they're starting to develop Zen 3, and then they're really on track for Zen 4, which is going to be rolling out late 2020 into 2021, which God knows what they're going to be able to do with that. Are they going to drop down to 5 nanometers? Is it going to become 7 nanometer plus plus? Are we going to start seeing those higher clock speeds? Where is it really going to go? We're mind readers. Let's get out the crystal ball. Oh, <laughs> no, but it'll be really cool to see what the future holds for the consumer style especially and the server uh, processes. Um, I really don't know where they're going to go from here. It's but. okay. Mac's not really full of energy. He's feeling really depressed that <laughs> Intel doesn't have anything to offer that's nearly as cool and as amazing as the new Zen architecture that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to your stuff soon enough. That's that, all I got. Yeah, that's what we've got for this uh, breaking news. And it's not really breaking. It's like a week old. But we wanted to talk to you guys about it and see if we could kind of give you a little bit more insight if you haven't already devoured all the information on it out there on the internet right now. So, as always, if you like the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe down below so that that way you can get more content from us, the hot mess of tech shows. You never quite know how bad we're going to screw up, but you should keep watching just in case. (laughs) So, we appreciate you guys watching, Guy. Uh, Yeah, we're done. (laughs) See ya. Later.